And welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today I'm going to be talking about the realities of learning to code. I've been watching several videos on YouTube about learning to code and especially, specifically about learning to code in Java. And I had found a couple of videos, uh, very interesting ones. Um, the first one uh, is, a, is a tutorial video for about like uh, one or two hours, I don't remember very well. Uh, that video was very well done. And uh, I'm going to put the, des um, the link in the description of the podcast and in the description of this video. Um, one thing that I continue to see uh, during this um, tutorial videos is that uh, the common thing is that this belief of trying to um, make Java the easiest thing in the world to get into. And in that effort, uh, we see the the famous uh, Hello World programs where you basically compile your Java program and you get the the iconic Hello World phrase on, on the terminal window. That's very good and well, uh, but most of the time, uh, most people just focus on the fact that you know what, you need to just type this in order to get the phrase on the screen, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't see many people explaining um, a lot of things that are going on on the first couple of uh, lines of code there. So I see that most of these tutorials tend to give the impression of uh, skipping a lot of explanation required to understand these concepts uh, just by the fact that uh, it's really hard to explain to the newcomer uh, how is this actually working and uh, the, the easiest thing to do I guess is to tell is to tell people you know what you only need to uh, type these lines of code at the beginning of the video or at the beginning of your program uh, don't wonder why there is no actual explanation at the moment. And you know what, you only need to do this to run your programs and we are going to start from there. And most of the time these tutorials skip uh, entirely how many, uh, the importance of creating a, uh, the main class for the program or they just skip altogether the explanation of what a class is on Java. Uh, and I, I have done that myself. I did a couple of uh, tutorial videos about Java programming in the past, and I, and I uh, blame myself for indulging into that very same uh, thing myself. So uh, in the effort to make um, Java programming easier to understand, uh, I ended up skipping a lot of things. and. I am afraid that a lot of YouTube videos do have that tendency. So, um, what I'm trying to say here is that you want to really uh, learn how to program in Java or in any other programming language, I would actually recommend you to do it the proper way. Uh, although you are going to find a lot of tutorials and free courses on YouTube. Uh, the truth is that these tutorials uh, are just that. They are just um, trying to get you to uh, to, be, to do something really specific and very flashy sometimes. And the truth is that that's not really learning the language, the programming language anyway, or how to actually develop software. So. I've been working, uh, or may I say, I've been a student um, in Pluralsight for quite some time, and by far seems to be the best place for me, at least, to learn about Java. There is a new site out there called, um, I think it's called Udemy, where you have these nano degrees courses, and uh, I got sold into the idea of getting into one of those nano degrees. Uh, for what I gather, it is um, uh, a bit commitment from the economical standpoint because uh, the courses 
uh, they are very expensive actually for myself. Uh, I think they are around uh, four two thousand dollars maybe, or I think they are two thousand dollars for a total amount of four or six months. I don't remember very well, so I consider that really expensive. I don't. I, I was checking the Java Nano Degree, Nano Degree program, and it seems to promise a lot of knowledge. Uh, by completing that course, I guess I will be uh, more than prepared for getting any job regarding Java web and Java in general, I guess. So it seems like um, the content seems to be there, uh, and they promise a lot. Uh, to cover, however, uh, I guess that the spending two thousand uh, dollars upfront, if you want to get it, uh, to get it uh, less expensive, I guess, uh, because you can go and pay month as uh, as months are passing, so you are paying each month. Uh, yet that's going to be even more money on that yeah so the 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 most value package is basically pay everything up front and you get a little discount uh, however we are talking about around two thousand dollars for four or six months i believe and that's quite some money uh, although if, if everything that they are promising in the syllabus um, is going to be covered correctly and I'm getting, and I'm actually learning that. Uh, mind you, if I get the effort to learn, actually, uh, I guess that will be more than enough for me, I guess. Uh, at this point, I'm looking for people that actually uh, course, uh, actually took that nano degree program, the nano degree program for Java, that is. And I'm looking for people that actually completed it. So, so that way I can actually take a decision because that's a lot of money actually, at least for me. So, uh, the realities of learning to go, well, basically, you are not going to learn how to develop software by watching videos. Uh, that's just a fad of life, I guess. Uh, you are going to learn by writing uh, your, maybe writing a small program and getting a book, getting a, a paid course maybe. Uh, you may try with YouTube tutorials. The truth is that since uh, most of those tutorials are, are being done by people in their free time um, without any economical compensation, I feel like there is not, uh, the incentive is, uh, to do a professional job is just not there. So I, I'm pretty sure that the people that are setting up those videos are very passionate about it. Uh, yet, if they are not making it uh, in a professional manner, I don't believe that's going to help you too much, I guess. Um, it's, it's funny because when you are asking for, uh, for money for something that you do, then the game changes because um, you actually need to be sure that you are delivering value with your courses. Uh, when you are doing something for free, th that pressure is just not there. So whenever somebody learns or not, it's not of your concern, really. You just wanted to, do, to help people, and if you cannot help them, well, uh, nobody is actually paying you. Um, so why should you care actually well um one thing that i have to say is that when i began this quest of learning to code um the first thing that i wished to do when i was a kid was to learn how to make video games for my nintendo um that didn't uh, went anywhere mostly uh, because back way back in the day, uh, we didn't have internet like today. We have internet in the in our hands, literally, because we get these phones and we can uh, log in into the internet right there. Uh, well, 
way back in the day when I was a kid, uh, uh, we didn't have access to the internet. So, and, and even if if we had access to the internet, when I finally get my hands on that, uh, resources to learn how to actually make video games was uh, they were basically non-existent. Uh, I'm talking about the 19s, for example. Um, where um, video game development was pretty much uh, uh, unknown for most people. Uh, today you can basically pick up uh, a video game engine like Unreal Engine. Uh, Unity is very popular too. And um, basically you have their access directly into the very tools that many video game developers uh, actually use to make their games. That doesn't mean that you are going to be making the next God of War, but um, just having access to the programming tools and the design tools is just a big step, I think. So, um, the first thing was trying to learn how to build a video game. The thing is, um, I did experiment with a lot of, uh, with BASIC especially. BASIC was, uh, uh, my first experience as a programmer. And after that, I began uh, creating custom maps for StarCraft during the 90s. Um, and then, at the beginning of the year 2000, I get my hands into an RPG maker. Um, <coughs> and I spent countless hours playing with that. Uh, I never did manage to finish a single game with that, but I did learn a lot. Uh, and it was very fun actually building something, even if you didn't uh, manage to finish the game. Uh, the act of actually building a game seems to be very fun. So that that was about it. Uh, but the thing is that um, what I'm trying to say is that learning to code or programming in general is not an easy task when you are doing it by yourself, um, especially because even if you learn uh, the syntax for a programming language, uh, that's just one little part of the equation you need also to know or learn when to use that um, syntax or when to use the tools of the programming language. And that's really, that's actually the hard part. For example, uh, if you're learning Java, you may eventually get into, uh, well, after passing uh, through the basics of creating variables, uh, creating classes. Um, you may find something called um, uh, interfaces. Uh, in Java, interfaces are basically contracts, um, which are basically uh, methods without actual implementation. So you actually use one of your classes to extend an interface and then you create the very particular implementation for that uh, for those methods so basically um, uh, interfaces may actually be compared to uh, child classes for inheritance in java uh, with the difference that uh, you are not in making an implement an actual implementation of the methods there so, uh, if you don't understand what I just say, that doesn't really matter. Um, the thing is that it's a tool that is not really used by most uh, beginners because uh, interfaces are coming to solve a more complex problem, a more sophisticated problem. So, sophistication comes after the initial phase of learning the basics. Uh, and what do I mean by learning the basics? Well, we do get the creating variables, uh, creating a class, creating methods, um, inheritance, creating a child class, uh, or extending another class. And those tools are really good and dandy, but most of the time, um, you're learning that from a tutorial video or even a tutorial in, in a web page, um, the truth is that it's very rare that in that tutorial they will include an example in the real world of, of when 
are you going to implement uh, interfaces, for example, or the example used uh, for implementing interfaces seems to be very abstract uh, 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 in the sense that it doesn't seem to be solving a real world problem. And that's in detriment of the learning experience because um, if you're learning how to use a screwdriver and you are just uh, using a, a, a screw into a piece of wood without any other context, uh, well, you are going. Even if you try to do that thousands of time, uh, even if you really, really learn how to uh, screw, uh, the truth is that um, well, after that's all. Uh, that's all well and done. But people want you maybe to build a house, and you only know how to use the tools themselves. Um, so the tools themselves are pretty hard to learn for most people. Uh, yet, uh, if you know how to actually use interfaces or collections or whatever else, um, the truth is that not many courses or tutorials cover, uh, well, interfaces are were created to solve this problem. And they, are, they, they should be used this way, or we uh, or I suggest you to use interfaces in this manner because they were basically created to solve this kind of problem. And that's the part that I'm not finding on free tutorials. Uh, on the other hand, on paid tutorials, for example, in Pluralsight, uh, I've been watching the Java, the Java developer path, where is a path in Pluralsight is basically a collection of courses divided by tiers. The first one is beginner, then comes intermediate, and lastly, advanced. So basically, these um, courses that had something in common, and that is to teach you something about Java, they are compiled into these paths, and if you basically watch all those courses and make the exercises, or at least you try out the examples, um, uh, that's actually a most efficient way to do it because most of these courses uh, had been done by professionals who actually use the programming language or ad or already used it to create something in the real world. Most people, uh, most people on YouTube, they are not professionals on the Java market. They talk about it. But when I uh, dig a little bit, and many of these YouTubers are very popular, yet when I dig in and I find out that they didn't work in the real world with, with Java, for example, and they just dedicated themselves to learn Java in order to teach Java. So there is a say uh, with this, um, uh, those who can do and those who can't don't. So basically, um, I don't remember how, how it was, but I believe that those who, who cannot do teach and those who can do, do it. So if you see these teachers on YouTube, most of them uh, learn, they pretty much learn uh, Java, but they, they are missing that section there where they need to know uh, when to use the tool. Even if they know how to use the tool, most of the time they don't really know why that tool was created or when to use it. And that's as important as the tool itself. So most of these people on YouTube, they just teach Java, but they are not using Java in, in a real world problem, solving something. I had never seen uh, an actual project which was created for the purpose of solving a problem, uh, uh, at least from these YouTubers. On GitHub, there is another, that's another matter entirely. On GitHub, you actually see code and you can actually see um, the problem being solved. Uh, and I would, and I will be glad if one of those people will actually create a YouTube channel to show their, their own projects and 
that's what I'm basically going to do with my own YouTube channel. Uh, but that's going to come after. Uh, well, the rea let's keep talking about the realities of learning how to code. Uh, Self-discipline is one of the worst things to, or, or most difficult thing to develop. Most of the time, uh, learning a new programming language at the beginning seems to be really fun. When the honeymoon phase is over, yeah, uh, then the temptation to jump into another programming language and learning something else entirely is way s is so big that you are going to end up jumping through from Java to JavaScript to HTML to CSS. Uh, to C-sharp, to Unity, to Unreal Engine, and, I, and that has been happening to me. So I did realize that I'm just uh, in tutorial hell, for, for so to speak, in the sense that I did manage to do the hello world, to learn the basic syntax, uh, control flow, uh, loops, uh, arrays, variables, references, classes, inheritance, and then I jump off into a new programming language or maybe a coding language like HTML or, or JSON or XML, for example. So the truth is that we need to focus. If you want to really learn how to program something, you really need to commit to a programming language and create products, uh, useful things in that programming language. Because uh, a lot of people just learn just for the sake of it, and they don't build anything with it. and that's pretty much uh, useless knowledge in the end. So what I do is basically um, I am work. Well, uh, I used to work as a database administrator, and um, a couple of months ago, I began learning about Java. It's it's been like a year now that I've been learning Java actually, and I c created many programs in Java to help me out on on my job as a sub uh, as a database administrator so uh, Java is a very powerful language in that aspect although I didn't manage to create a graphical user interface either using uh, Java FX which is being discontinued I believe uh, or at least is no longer part of the JDK official release on Oracle um, so yeah um, another option is to create a web interface, a website, which I may interact with my Java programs. Um, and I've been reading about it, and basically uh, the first thing was to jump into Java Enterprise Edition, yet uh, Oracle basically discontinued that also, and is no longer being supported. So I guess that it's not going to be a good idea to learn it at this point if I'm going to be creating new products anyway. And there is a Spring and a Spring Boot and a Spring Core and that um, and the Spring Family Frameworks uh, seems to be uh, the option to go right now. Um, I did learn that in my previous job there was a really big a Spring uh, project going on. Uh, so I guess I'm going to be learning a Spring, uh, basically because um, although making Java programs for the command line, uh, it has been really useful and very practical for me. Uh, the truth is that uh, not many people feel uh, confident using the command line, and I may like to actually create graphical user interfaces for regular users. So. Um, learning how to do that it seems to be uh, a very complex task and it's not going to be solved by watching uh, one or two hours of tutorials on YouTube. So uh, it seems like there is a plural side uh, path for just for a Spring and there is a Spring Boot and there is a Spring Core. I, I wonder what the differences between them are. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I do have a ground to cover, uh, a lot to cover just with Java. Uh, Multi-threading, connection to databases, 
um, how to represent dates and time in Java. Uh, did I say multi-threading? Uh, there is a lot of things to learn in Java. So I'm focusing on that right now. Um, well, that's basically it. Uh, watching tutorials on YouTube do help me from time to time, but most of the time uh, the free materials or the free courses or the free tutorials on YouTube, uh, they do very little in the great uh, picture uh, because they are not really seriously uh, involved with the programming language. I do see people just like myself talking about their experiences in front of a webcam. Uh, but the truth is that unless you are building something, uh, you are not going to learn anything. And that's a reality. That's a fact of uh, learning to code. You actually need something to create in order for you to actually learn how to program in a programming language. Uh, in my case, uh, I was actually working uh, and I managed to create um, a program in Java that allows me to uh, pull out pictures store into a database, an SQL database inside a, a blood field. So I extracted the pictures in, uh, that are um, stored inside a table in a database. I extract those pictures I process them, I reduce the size, and I store them again on a different database. So, yeah. Uh, I was do I'm not a fan of storing files directly into database fields, and I don't really, if I have the, the choice of doing that, I will not do so, because I believe that the file system exists for that purpose, to manage files. So why should I not use that? I don't know. Uh, but sometimes those decisions are being made by someone else, and I just been dragging along with that. So uh, learning to code is going to cost you money. Don't be afraid to spend money, but uh, you must be really sure that you are going to be focusing on one thing. And you and that one thing is going to actually help you into building the thing that you want to build. So I guess that's going to be all for today. I've been rambling about for some time, so thank you for coming in and see you later. Goodbye.